It really felt like, you know, we were in an all-out war. The issue had become so polarized in Canada that we were failing to make any progress. These are two communities that have not spent a lot of time talking to each other. When you're in your opposite corners, it's very easy to say production automatically em means emissions, automatically means bad stuff for the environment, therefore it's all bad. Just as in when you're in the opposite corner, it's easy to say um, worrying about emissions means loss of jobs, loss of profits, and therefore we can't go there. Greenhouse gases were continuing to go up. We weren't getting any kind of reasonable policy in place. And ultimately, the development was still going ahead relatively unabated. We knew that we wanted to have a robust economy, and we knew that there was this deep connection between a healthy environment and addressing climate change and having a robust economy. You had an emerging consensus that doing nothing on climate was the absolute worst economic scenario possible for this province. I think there needed to be a catalyst to get the discussion going and to start to, to build a level of trust that allowed us to have the conversations we needed to have with, with recognition, I think, in both parts, both by both parties, that uh, it was pretty unclear and uncertain where that conversation was going to go. And so we sat down for dinner at a small restaurant just to try and share perspectives. And when we really started talking about it and started talking about what is the future that we want to see, what is the future for Alberta, the future for Canada on climate change, what I found is a real solid commitment to wanting to lead. And we shared that commitment. That's the moment when I thought, okay, I, I could pull some other environmental leaders together and they would be interested in spending time on this conversation. And she said, Ed, hear me out. I want to get a few people around a table quietly at a restaurant in Calgary, at the ED, the CEO level, see if we're even on the same page. If you sit down for a meal you know, with a, you know, a group of folks that are in uh, conflict, the last thing they want to do at first is talk about the conflict, so they resort to small talk. And when they resort to small talk, they discover things about each other that they actually have in common. Oh, you actually have kids? I've got kids, you know. Oh, you enjoy eating dinner, so do I. That's why I'm here this evening. And it's those little things that begin to create bridges. You're going to be uncomfortable. You're, going to, you're not going to feel good in a lot of meetings. And, um, but, you know, that's, that's leadership. That's what it's about. And you got to have the courage to lead and the courage to stick with it. Lots of times there, there was a sense expressed to me by all involved that there's no way we're going to be able to do this. Those folks across the table, they don't understand it. They'll never be able to agree to something that, uh, that we would absolutely need. And you just begin chipping away. You start to peel back a layer or two and you uncover some nuggets of commonality. Once we got into this conversation, we were able to sort of um, see the humanity in each other and, and use that to to get through some of the very difficult discussions. Dan was great at bringing in process and using little uh, tricks like that. Like, uh, don't say no, you know, say, all right, well, yes, and what if? So forcing us to keep an open mind. I think Zipporah might have coined the term directional leadership. We wanted to move in a direction that was addressing these things, that was helping to create the conditions for growth in our economy, for addressing climate change, reducing emissions, and putting Canada back on the stage as a leader in climate policy. The significant breakthrough at the time was to actually shift the conversation 
to its emissions that matter, it's not production that matters. It's saying we don't like the emissions associated with the barrels, but it still allows for the growth of actual barrels. If we can set a common goal around reducing emissions as an industry, as a province, as a country, then that triggers uh, certain other agreements, like agreeing to a carbon price. The carbon price can stimulate innovation, new technology, and reduce emissions. They wanted to use carbon pricing that was escalating at a pace that would create the certainty in limiting emissions. And we wanted to have a carbon price that would allow us to be competitive um, and create the conditions to invest in technology and innovation to bend the emissions curve. The issue I'm concerned about is climate change and if they are capable of drastically reducing their emissions at a, in, a, in a way that's cost effective so they can continue to attract investment, more power to them. You have to look at the totality of it, carbon price, emissions limit, technology innovation, production, competitiveness. Those are all important parts of the package that make it work. We wanted to ensure that we help create a leadership role uh, for Alberta and Canada on these issues that has staying power. The leadership from this government, the creation of the climate leadership team, the incredible work that they did to put content on the table, then gave us specific proposals to debate. And we already had a foundation of principles and understanding. And the missing partner at the table was, was government. And so when we were elected, there was a chance to move forward. With this new government saying, listen, we are going to do something significant on this early on in the mandate. Everyone around the table realized, okay, it's go time. Throughout the discussions, we definitely wanted to have recommendations that made sense for a government. They brought the largest players to the table. They were able to reach consensus. They were able to go back and forth collectively with the government. The fact that oil and gas and, and environmental leaders were able to come together, find their own common solutions, bridge that divide, uh, gave us just that extra little push uh, to be able to move forward with our plan and was absolutely critical and, and it wouldn't have happened without them. In a world where people are often seeking to divide, this demonstrates to me that now we actually can work together to address solutions. I'm very excited to be standing here with leaders from our energy industry and leaders from civil society engaged in environmental issues. After decades of polarization and fighting, a lot of us didn't really expect this moment to ever happen. Fundamentally, this is about breaking away from the pack. It felt like we had done something that everyone told us could not be done. Government, industry and civil society in Alberta are coming together. It showed the power of the plan. The power of the plan, it was able to bring all these people together. Four CEOs of the largest oil sands companies, five leaders of significant environmental organizations in Canada, Dr. Leach, who led the panel, the minister, the premier, Chief Tony Alexis. This really was an unthinkable moment, and yet we went from, in that moment, what was perceived to be a climate laggard to a climate leader. We understood that we had done something that was monumental and that was historic. I remember that feeling, standing there, just thinking, this moment will change history. It felt like this was the culmination of a lot of work, and it was, frankly. Uh, in many respects, it's the beginning, not the end. I was standing right about here watching this unfold and I'm um, standing beside one of my colleagues and, and just realizing that um, I think we just changed the game.